Hello everyone. So today we'll talk about the questions from the solution chapter. So this video is for the PU student and state board student. Okay. So we'll talk about the important question which can come in your exam. So first question is state the Henry's law, write its mathematical form. So at constant temperature, what happened? The solubility of gas in a liquid. If you are trying to dissolve gas in a liquid, it is directly proportional to the gas pressure of the gas above the liquid. Suppose if you have high pressure of the gas, then more gas will get dissolved in the solution. So partial pressure is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas above the solution is directly proportional to the mole fraction of gas in the solution. And there is a sign of constant. This is KH called as Henry law constant. So remember partial pressure is equal to KH into mole fraction. Important thing about the KH is if KH value is very high, then solubility will decrease. Question number second is differentiate between molality and molarity of a solution and what is the effect of change in temperature in both. First we talk about the molarity. Molarity is given by capital M. It is defined as the number of moles of solute, number of moles of solute per one liter of solution. Okay. Next is molality. It is again, it is denoted by small m and it is equal to number of moles of solute per 1 kg of the solvent so here you have taken 1 liter of solution and you have taken per kg of solvent now what happened with the ch change of temperature molarity is independent of the temperature whereas molarity is function of temperature or dependent on temperature why so because volume if you look at the molarity here we talk in liters means volume so if you change the temperature if you increase the temperature volume increases if you decrease the temperature volume decreases so change in temperature will cause change in the volume and molarity will change whereas mass does not change with the temperature okay so if we talk about molarity we have taken kg of solvent so the kg of solvent does not changes with the temperature so as a result molarity changes with the temperature and molality does not changes with the temperature question number third is define colligative property and mention its four types what are colligative properties the properties which depend on the number of solute particle irrespective of their nature so what you will see ki how many solute particles pr are present suppose if you have one mole of glucose or one mole of urea so number of solute particles are one mole so they will show the same type of property and relative to the total number of particle present. So colligative properties only depend upon the total number of particle present, not depend upon their nature. So colligative property are four types. We'll study in this chapter four are first is relative lowering of vapor pressure. Second is elevation in boiling point. Third is depression in freezing point and fourth is osmotic pressure. Next question is what are ideal solution and mention their characteristic. The solution which obeys the Rolle's law for entire range of concentration. So if a solution can obey Rolle's law for entire concentration is called as ideal solution and we know Rolle's law partial pressure of the solution will be equal to the partial pressure of component 1 and partial pressure of component 2. Suppose there are two volatile liquids are present in a solution. So total partial pressure of the liquid will be equal to partial pressure of component 1 plus partial pressure of component 2 or A or B. If you mix the solution, what will happen to the volume after? Suppose you have mixed 100 and 200 ml. After mixing, volume will remain 300. So mixing of delta V of mixing will remain same. So there is no change in volume. So there is no change in volume. Similarly, the heat after mixing will remain same. There is no change in the heat will happen. So there is no change in enthalpy. If we talk about the force of attraction, suppose we have two component A and B. The force of attraction between the AA, A is intramolecular force of attraction between BB is intramolecular force of attraction will be equal to the intermolecular force of attraction between the A and the B. Question number five is define the following term mole fraction isotonic solution and Van Hoff factor. So what is mole fraction? Mole fraction is defined as the ratio of number of moles of one component. So we can talk about any component of the solution which is solute or solvent. You can take one component divided by the total number of moles of all component in a solution. Okay. So suppose you have we are talking about solute to so number of moles of solute divided by total number of solutes of solute plus as well as solvent number of moles of solute as well as solvent will give you mole fraction next is called as isotonic solution when two solution are said to be isotonic when they exert same osmotic pressure 
so when two solutions have same amount of osmotic pressure then there is no flow of solvent will happen from one solution to the another these are called as isotonic solution and it happens when they have same molar concentration so suppose two solutions have same molar concentration so then they are called as isotonic next is van hoff factor it is defined as the ratio of the normal molecular mass normal molecular mass to the observed normal which you have calculated and what molecular mass you are observing is called as van hoff factor so i is equal to normal mass by abnormal mass or it is also equal to the observed colligative properties divided by the calculated colligative properties question number 6 is difference between non ideal solution with positive deviation and negative deviation from raoult's law so how you differentiate between the positive deviation non ideal solution from the negative deviation for non ideal solution so remember so first we talk about positive deviation in this solution ab interaction so ab means intermolecular force of attraction suppose you have two solution a and b and you have mixed it the force of attraction between a and b is weaker than the force of attraction between the aa and bb whereas in negative deviation the force of attraction between ab so intermolecular force of attraction is stronger than the force of attraction between aa and bb intramolecular force of attraction next we talk about the pressure because here what is happening the molecules are separate they are not attract interacting with each other as a result total pressure what happen increases the total pressure is greater than the pressure of the individual component but here molecules are interacting with each other the pressure is less than the individual pressure of each component because gases are far away from the each other they are the volume is increasing after mixing whereas here volume is decreasing after mixing here heat is absorbed so this is endothermic process and in this process heat is released so it is negative next for positive deviation example is ethanol and acetone and for negative deviation example is phenol and aniline question number 7 is reverse osmosis and its application so what is reverse osmosis movement of solvent particle from higher concentration to lower concentration through semi permeable membrane when pressure applied is greater than the osmotic pressure what it means suppose you have high concentration solution salt water is there and this is low concentration solution which is fresh water normally when you are connected it with this semi permeable membrane water should move from the fresh water to the sea water but what you have done so in this sea water because of the concentration of salt pressure is there that is called as osmotic pressure you have applied a reverse pressure okay you have applied a pressure outside which is more than the osmotic pressure as a result water movement start happening in a reverse direction from the salt to the fresh water okay so this movement of solvent particle from higher concentration from salt solution to the fresh water through semi permeable membrane when pressure applied is greater than the osmotic pressure so this is called as reverse osmosis and because of reverse osmosis you can do desalination of water you can remove the salts from the water suppose you have a salt water and fresh water what you can do pure water is squeezed out from the sea water through the membrane same process you will do you will apply pressure greater than the osmotic pressure and remember the membrane you use is called as cellulose acetate membrane you will use question number 8 is what is azeotrope define azeotrope what type of azeotrope is formed by the positive deviation from the raoult's law and give example so what are azeotropes they are the binary mixture binary mixture means there is one solute or one solvent in present and having same composition in the liquid as well as vapor phase so suppose you have two component a and b so in the liquid phase you have some certain percentage composition whereas in the vapor phase phase also you have same composition so when they are the solution having same composition in the liquid as well as vapor phase and they boils at a constant temperature so these type of solutions are called as azeotrope so when you have positive deviation remember because of positive deviation pressure increases and because of increase of pressure you get minimum boiling azeotrope so they can boil at the low temperature and then examples are ethanol and water question number 9 is derive the equation to calculate the molecular mass of unknown substance okay unknown solute they have given using raoult's law of relative lowering of vapor pressure so what it means this unknown solute can dissolve in the solution but it cannot form vapors okay it is non volatile solute so according to the raoult's law you have to remember this law 
रिलेटेड लोअरिंग ऑफ वेपर प्रेशर इज इक्वल टू द मोल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ सोल्यूट सो पी नॉट माइनस पी डिवाइडेड बाय पी नॉट इज इक्वल टू द मोल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ द सोल्यूट सो हेयर वी हैव टेकन काई बी सो पी नॉट इज द वेपर प्रेशर ऑफ प्योर कंपोनेंट माइनस विच इज द वेपर प्रेशर नाउ डिवाइडेड बाय वेपर प्रेशर ऑफ प्योर कंपोनेंट माइनस काई बी इज नथिंग बट मोल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ द सोल्यूट सो वी कैन टेक पी नॉट माइनस पी डिवाइड बाय पी नॉट सो एन बी नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ बी डिवाइडेड बाई टोटल नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ ए एन बी ए इज द सॉल्वेंट सो सपोज यू हैव टेकन वेरी डायल्यूट सोल्यूशन फॉर वेरी डायल्यूट सोल्यूशन देर इज लॉट ऑफ सॉल्वेंट एज कंपेयर टू सोल्यूट सो एन ए विल बी फार ग्रेटर सो दिस इक्वेशन यू कैन इग्नोर एन बी वेन इट इज एडिंग सो पी नॉट माइनस पी बाई पी नॉट बिकम एन ए बाई एन बी देन यू कैन सब्सिट्यूट द वैल्यू फॉर एन बी नंबर ऑफ मोल्स इज इक्वल टू वेट ऑफ द substance b divided by molar mass number of moles of a weight of the substance a molar mass of a so using this formula you can find the mb molar mass of the substance which is unknown so wb into ma divided by wa into p not a divided by p not a minus p question number 10th is human blood has a osmotic pressure of 7.2 atmosphere at body temperature which is 30 degree 37 degree celsius you have to calculate the concentration of the solute present in the blood and they have given the value of the r which is 0.0821 liters atmosphere per kelvin first we talk about the osmotic pressure is equal to crt c is the concentration and we will talk concentration in terms of molarity molarity is number of moles per liter of the solution Here in the question they have already given the pressure is equal to 7.2. Temperature is given as 37 degrees Celsius. So you have to write in Kelvin. 37 plus 273 is 310. And R value is given. It is 0.0821. So remember, whenever in the question it is given in liters, so you have to use 0.0821. You substitute the value. So 7.2 is equal to C 0.082 into 310. So C will be equal to 7.2 divided by 0.082 into 310. So the answer for the concentration will be equal to 0.2828. Okay, and you have to write in terms of molarity. Molarity is number of moles per liter of the solution. Question number 11th is mention the effect of the application of the Henry's law. Henry's law states that if the more the pressure is there, more the solubility of the gas happens in the liquid or in the solution. So suppose to increase the solubility of co2 in soft drink and soda water if you want to increase the solubility of co2 in the soft drink and soda water what you can do the bottle is sealed at very high pressure so because of increase of pressure solubility of co2 will increase next to avoid bent as well as toxic effect of high concentration of nitrogen in the blood so as deep sea diver or scuba diver go inside the sea what happen the pressure of the air increases and nitrogen will get dissolved inside the blood and when person will try to come up it result in formation of bubble inside the arteries which can lead to the death of the person so that condition is called as bends so remember when nitrogen will get dissolved in the water and then nitrogen will start to release forming bubbles in the artery that is called as bends so this condition can happen so that's why the tanks are used for scuba divers are filled with air with diluted with the helium so what we can do we can replace some of the nitrogen with the helium as a result the mixing of nitrogen will become less in the blood next at high altitude the partial pressure of oxygen is less than the that of ground level so at you go to the high altitude the level of oxygen will become very less as compared to osmotic pressure as a result because outside pressure is less it leads to a low concentration of oxygen to so the oxygen which is present inside the body that will become less because outside pressure is less and in the blood as well as tissue so this condition is called as anoxia question number 12 is what is elevation in boiling point and draw plot showing elevation in boiling point so first what is elevation in boiling point elevation in boiling point is the difference between the boiling point of solution containing non volatile solute and boiling point of pure solvent so what happen when you add non volatile solute in a pure solvent suppose pure solvent we have water its boiling point is 100 degree celsius but when you add a non volatile solute into a pure solvent its boiling point will increase that difference of boiling point which has increased is called as elevation of boiling point it is denoted by delta tb if we look at the graph what happens suppose you have a solvent solvent has a pure solvent has higher vapor pressure so at little increase in temperature so if the temperature increase to t delta t not b 
so what happens its boiling point will achieve so this is the temperature at which which it boils which is low but as you add non volatile solute vapor pressure decrease now in order to achieve the boiling point you have to heat more so the temperature required for the boiling point of the solution is tb so tb minus t not b is equal to delta tb so that's that delta tb is called as the elevation in boiling point and it is equal to kb w2 into 1000 w1 into m2 if you write this uh, so w2 is equal to mass of the solute w1 is the mass of the solvent m2 is the molar mass of the solute so this formula is very important you have to remember next what is kb kb is called as boiling point elevation constant also called as ebullioscopic constant and its unit unit is kelvin kg per mole question number 13 is what is depression in freezing point and give relationship between the depression of freezing point and the molecular mass of the solute so it is decrease in freezing point of a solution when non volatile solute is added to the solvent suppose freezing point of the water is 0 degree celsius when it forms ice so when you add non volatile solute freezing point decreases so that decrease in freezing point is called as depression in freezing point so decrease in freezing point of a solution when non volatile solute is added is called as depression in freezing point and it is denoted as delta tf so delta tf is equal to kf w2 into 1000 w1 by m2 okay w2 into m2 so w2 is equal to mass of the solute w1 is the mass of the solvent m2 is the molar mass of the solute you, you can find the relationship between the freezing point and the molecular mass okay next important thing is this kf is called as cryoscopic constant and its units are very important it is kelvin kg per mole question number 14 is what is the value of i for the nacl k2so4 and glucose so i is van t hoff factor so suppose if we talk about nacl so nacl when dissolved in water it will dissociate into na plus cl negative it will produce two ions so when a compound produces two ions i value will become equal to two similarly for k2so4 it will dissociate in water to form two k plus and one so4 ions so i value is three whereas if you put glucose in the water it does not dissociate as a result for glucose i value will always be one Next question is a solution containing 2.56 grams of sulfur in 100 grams of CS2 gave a freezing point lowering of 0.383 Kelvin. Suppose you have added 2.56 grams of sulfur in CS2. So there is decrease in the freezing point by 0.383 Kelvin. You have to find the molar mass of the sulfur and KF value of CS2 is given as 3.83 Kelvin kg per mole. So we use the formula delta tf is equal to kf into molality and we know it is equal to delta tf is equal to kf w2 into 1000 m2 into w1 delta tf means depression in freezing point is already given which is 0 0.383 uh, kf value is already given which was 3.85 weight of the sulfur is given 2.56 weight of the cs2 is given m2 you have to find into 1000 so m2 is equal to you find the value 2.56 3.83 into 10 divided by 0. 383 and molar mass so like this you can calculate molar mass of the sulfur which is 256 grams per mole i hope you understood all the questions please like the video if you have any doubt write in the comment section so see you in the next class bye